to the extent that you approach a mainstream outlet or journalist and ask them if they've considered using crowdsource research, uh, the answer you're likely to get is, this is something that we need. Aren't we doing a pretty good job already? Uh, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. Instead of introducing myself any further, I'm going to read to you mutually exclusive things that have appeared about me in the uh, major outlets, the, the award-winning outlets, the ones that we are asked to compare our output to when we put together a crowdsourced research project. Uh, you'll find that I was the official spokesman for Anonymous, or perhaps the unofficial spokesman for Anonymous, or maybe just a self-proclaimed spokesman for Anonymous or maybe a guy who denied being a spokesperson for Anonymous over and over again, sometimes on national television, to no apparent effect. You also find that I was either a conventional journalist, an unconventional journalist, a satirist who despised all journalists, or, quote, an underground commander in a new kind of war, unquote. As NBC's Brian Williams once put it, no doubt exaggerating. There's a book by a Forbes reporter, Pammy Olson, that claims I'm from Houston, which, thank God, I'm not. And uh, gently mocking me for my obsession with a firm called Booz Allen Hamilton. Obviously, this book came out before 2013, when Snowden, a Booz Allen Hamilton employee, changed the national conversation. Uh, sometimes the press gets it wrong in my favor, which I appreciate. I've been given credit for discovering several secret government programs that were, in fact, discovered by others. Uh, and the reporting about what I actually did discover is usually wrong. Bloomberg once met, had me on a panel as a security expert. A few weeks after that, a girl I was dating happened to realize that I misunderstood what a zero day was. It's apparently not a script. It's actually just knowledge of an intrusion possibility, is my understanding now. So now I know that. Um, sometimes it's hard to decide whether an error is going to help me or hurt me because it's so bizarre. Uh, when I was arrested by a SWAT team in 2012, Reuters claimed that I was, quote, best known for threatening to hack into the computers of the Zetas, one of Mexico's deadly drug trafficking cartels, unquote. Which is not exactly what happened, incidentally. Uh, and this reminds me, I'm actually going to tell you something that a lot of people don't know about Reuters. Uh, it's kind of interesting. It's actually a very bad wire service. That's inside journalism knowledge right there. I'm just kidding. It's OK. Um, a few months ago, I went on the BBC, and they introduced me as having gone to prison for hacking. Uh, and so you have a great deal of mutually exclusive information about someone who's being covered uh, by other journalists. And, and the reason that journalists don't understand the necessity that they have right now in the course of doing, uh, essentially serving as the central nervous system of a unprecedented 21st century imperial republic is because most of them have never been covered by other journalists. We have studies here and there that can tell us how bad or good uh, kinds of journalism are. Uh, we know things about crowdsourcing. We know that there was a study a number of years ago that Wikipedia was about as accurate as uh, Encyclopedia Britannica on many subjects. We don't know a lot about journalism, frankly. Uh, Local journalism, for the most case, uh, is the only source for the stories that they're putting out. What we do know is that there's a problem and that there is a solution, potentially, that we can contribute to over the next few years. Now, the way that information and conventional sort of media thinking works is that if you see something associated with something that is false, you're generally going to believe the entire thing is false. That's something that could be weaponized in the future and probably already has been by some intelligence agencies that, are, that are, you know, have been thinking about these problems. It's very easy to put out false information attached to real information and thereby the, the press loses all interest. Uh, even to the extent that we found things like persona management, which was a program that's, that still exists and, and has sort of proliferated, apparently, uh, involving fake online people run by government agencies and corporations, uh, and run, in this case, out of, out of CENTCOM. 
Uh, even to the extent we reveal those things and show why these are dangerous and why they will proliferate and why the fact that the U.S. is encouraging companies to develop them and why the fact that uh, the information sources that we depend on are vulnerable to these things to the extent that they are developed further, uh, we didn't get much traction. That's the, that's the other major lesson. Uh, of, of what happened with Anonymous and w uh, WikiLeaks and other groups, uh, aside from the fact that a group like WikiLeaks can deteriorate very quickly and turn into the enemy. Uh, the other major lesson is that it doesn't necessarily matter what you find. Crowdsourcing is one part of a solution. Uh, the other part is getting the media as an entity to pay attention and take seriously the things that uh, obviously matter. And that's a harder, that's a different kind of subject. But it's, 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 it's part and parcel with our uh, job of bringing to attention, you know, the things that, that they're not performing correctly. It, it's, it's an extension of that. We have something of an answer to both of those uh, problems. Uh, one of those, uh, the crowdsourcing and the uh, sort of encouraging press to do better. Pursuance, the Pursuance Project. Uh, which is my new initiative that we're working on for a year. Steve uh, here is going to be giving a presentation at a 10 or 11 about how it works, but I just want to briefly explain the basics of it. This is a visualized online space whereby individuals uh, who kind of have a singular or a collective basic ideology, or at least agree on several fundamentals, uh, come in and join and uh, are able to put together entities called pursuances. Uh, Pursuances are kind of like living organizational charts or uh, DNA, and, and, the, and the entirety of this is like an ecosystem whereby activists, journalists, researchers, people who are already running NGOs or nonprofits, uh, formal or otherwise, can experiment and expand and better take advantage of their constituency. There's a great uh, line by the founder of the Pirate Party, whose name I can't pronounce and so I won't say it. Uh, He's talking to somebody who runs an NGO, and he tells him, your problem isn't the people that work for you. Your problem is the people that want to work for you for free, but you don't let them. That's a problem that every NGO, every nonprofit, and every formal and informal group in the world that is working to protect uh, open societies faces at all times. And it's something that we've had the ability to expand upon and to explore uh, over the past 10 years, but really haven't gotten around to it uh, to the extent that we should. This is our attempt to solve that problem, to make it easier for every one of these groups to take advantage, better advantage of their existing uh, infrastructure and, and people and constituency, and then better incorporate their, their potential constituency into something that, that works, into something that can expand and grow and uh, maintain the agility of an amorphous movement while uh, taking on the rigor of an institution and losing nothing or little uh, in that combination. We. Uh, have a couple of emphases in terms of what we want to see people use it for and in terms of the entities, the pursuances that we'll be creating as, as also developers of pursuance as a whole. One of those is obviously crowdsource research. Uh, and to that end, we've recruited a number of people. I think 1,800 have signed up to participate. Uh, we have a few orgs like uh, Frontline Wellness, which provides conflict training and medical uh, training and telemedicine in conflict zones. Uh, we have a board of directors with a number of whistleblowers, John, John, Kiry John Kiryaku, whose name appears to be Greek, uh, Birgitta Jan's daughter, the uh, Icelandic MP, uh, Alex Winner, the activist and actor and film producer, uh, a number of others of that background. Uh, we have a Kickstarter on June 11th uh, to raise money for the development. We're finishing up the software right now. The uh, software itself, the apparatus, the server that we'll over oversee uh, for this crowdsourced, uh, open source, end-to-end -end encrypted uh, technology uh, will be uh, available next few months. Uh, and it's going, it's, it's, it, and it, it's one of the many solutions, one of which is hypothesis, that is going to make it easier, uh, not just for journalists who understand crowdsourcing and care about it to use it, but to appeal to journalists who maybe don't, who maybe just don't care. Uh, we're going to solve the problem that Ben Greenwald faced when he had Snowden you know, standing in line among 30, 40 other emails that he must have gotten that day, trying to get his attention. Uh, again, Steve will, will uh, talk a little bit more about this, but broadly, if you are a journalist or anyone else who needs information or needs to uh, 
uh, give instructions or set up tasks. Uh, you, can, you can imagine yourself as a sphere in this wide system. And then you, br you bring on two people you trust under them, under you. Volunteers, a journal, any journalist who has any following whatsoever, even none, can easily find people that, that, under, that are competent and have them work under him. Those people themselves can attach to and bring on, in any way, any way they see fit, this self-organizing, expanding network. And so the people right now that are out there on Twitter commenting and, and uh, clearly have time that they can spend uh, to get journalists to cover different things or to help them cover something better, uh, presumably can be brought into this. Uh, and we know, we, they know we know they can because they've already signed up. Uh, and put to work for a journalist they like and helping them either respond to uh, things that they're already investigating or giving them tips about things that they should investigate themselves. And all of this information goes through this sort of, this sort of automatic filter, uh, this, this sort of uh, self-organized organism almost, uh, such that the journalist himself is not having to necessarily deal with anything that doesn't matter. He's only getting the to the extent that he's set up uh, the, the people in this network originally, he, he's ultimately getting a filtered version of all the content and all of the tips and all the suggestions and some of the nonsense that people give you online right now. Uh, and that's gonna make things easier for them and, and they'll be able to see that how much easier that'll make it. It'll make their jobs, uh, it'll make their output better. It'll make our country and every country uh, less subject to deterioration, the deterioration that, that has come about, you know, we've, has become more noticeable in the last few years. That's the other uh, great advantage we have, uh, ironically, is that it's becoming clearer and clearer that these things matter, that journalism is not a sinecure, it's not a career as such, it's not, it's not there for you to eventually own a home. It, it's there because we, we have to have it 